It's a record year for EVs. It's a record year for home deliveries. So what comes next? Well, we think it's the electric van boom. Now, in this episode, I'm joined by Matt Dillon, Head of Commercial Vehicles at Lease Plan. So, hello, Matt. Thank you very much for coming along to, uh, to talk to us today. Now, as Head of Commercial Vehicles, um, I mean, what changes have you seen in recent years? Well, the commercial vehicle population in the UK has been growing faster than cars. Um, at the moment, there's roughly about 4.3 million vans on the road today. And that's roughly double what it was 25 years ago. But what we haven't really seen is, is really a, sort of a limited large scale uh, adoption of electric vans. Um, there's in fact, towards the end of 2019, there was about 8,000 electric vans on the road. Um, but which to give you a bit of perception there, it's sort of uh, it's, it's kind of two in every thousand vans, which is not a great right, deal. No. <laughs> um, but as we walked into 2020 uh, and, and, and COVID sort of took hold, we saw a steep increase in, in the demand for commercial vehicles. Um, we actually really mainly due to the home deliveries um, uh, during lockdown. But aligned to that, we also saw a significant increase in electric vans and electric van registrations. And as of the end of uh, March 2021 this year, there was roughly 16,300 electric vans. So that's, that's doubled in just over a year. Right. And it's also that just a simple thing of, I remember when I first saw electric delivery vehicles, so electric vans, mm -hmm. you know, and you'd fight you and say, so roughly how far can it go? And they were saying things like 30, 40, 50 miles. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm talking sort of eight, nine <laughs> years ago. And then the, I've sort of forgotten that. And then I get in one more recently and I go, oh, God, it'll do 140 miles. Yeah. Oh, my God, you know. No, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, no. No, it's a, a really big change. So in, in, in five years ago, so LCVs, I always want to know what an LC, LCV stands for. Is that like, like commercial vehicle? Like commercial yeah, like vehicle. Commercial vehicle yeah. So, uh, you, know, um, you know, they were considered a bit unlikely. They were, you know, all the... All the hesitancy around them was very understandable you know yeah. with private vehicles people talking about range anxiety all that but for if you're running a business and you need to get those deliveries to that place and you can't do it mm. that's a much bigger challenge so um you know has that has that has the d technology changed and developed in that area uh, well absolutely we're seeing more affordable uh, electric vans on the market coming through, those that have got longer ranges, um, faster charging times, and, and, and certainly we're seeing more choice. And that's effectively giving fleet operators much more, more viable options um, to, to electrify. And, and certainly within our towns and city operations where you know, air quality is such a key concern, that is where we're probably seeing quite a significant amount of growth. So then the, really, I suppose the key thing is then charging because in, in a sense if you've got a, a, dep a distribution depot and you've got power there yeah. you can put charges in yeah. sort of overnight charging you take you can take advantages of a lot of that but presumably then it's, a, it's a, an aspect that I presume you can explain to businesses that there could be significant cost savings in that as well. Yeah, so there, I mean, absolutely, there are incentives available today, uh, good financial incentives. So um, in t most recently, the Chancellor announced a, a 0% benefit in kind on, on zero emission electric vehicles. So it's never been more affordable for a lot of businesses that offer private use of their vans. Um, there's also grant funding um, to help with the upfront costs of electric vehicles, and that will go up to 6,000 pounds. And there's also uh, support for rolling out workplace charging as well. So it is intriguing then with, the, with all those advantages that mm. it, you know, electric vans are still a, a really fractional proportion of the entire van fleet, whereas the electric private electric car market is you know definitely growing I mean we've seen yeah. sales of those grow at such a sharp rate I mean what what do you think that is a lot some people say that electric vans are kind of two or three years behind electric cars would you say that was accurate yes yeah, so uh, the van sector has been particularly slightly more difficult than the car sector to electrify and that's mainly due to the mission critical status of some of these vehicles so when it comes to range and payload and, and, and what they can carry they are it's, it's critical to the operation um, but Typically, I think even where there's been advances in technology, uh, in, in, certainly in the vans and car sector, we're still seeing that vans are heavier, uh, electric vans are heavier than their, their diesel equivalents. Um, and that does have an impact on what they can carry and what they can tow. So, but what we've also seen is, is, is there's the choices that are available, albeit they're getting better. If we look back recently, there was probably a more of a focus on the slightly smaller van range. So even though some fleet operators would be really keen to move to electric, they may not have had the right van 
or van option available to them to make it work. So, and also, I guess from a bigger picture perspective, um, uh, uh, the manufacturers have invested more so within the, uh, the car or electric car market. Obviously, they would, it's a much larger market and it's easier to spread some of that investment. But we're certainly within the commercial vehicle world, we're starting to see some of the benefits of that investment. So that is, uh, it, yeah, that is interesting. And there's also, as we are witnessing right here, the, the new arrivals. Oh, sorry, bit of a gag there, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you know, there are now startup companies that, yeah. are, that are exclusively producing Absolutely, electric yeah, delivery. I yeah. mean, this is such an amazing it company, an amazing such an amazing van. Yeah. Uh, most recently, you know, as we said, we're, we're living in a world of, of, or an age of home delivery now. Yeah. Um, actually, from the uh, recent lease plan uh, mobility insights report, we saw that 47% of people are, are, are now online shopping for their yeah. discretionary spend. And, and, and when they're choosing online shopping, they're choosing home delivery. Now, naturally, that is going to have an impact on the number of vans that are on the road. Yeah. So more stops, more returns back to, uh, to depot. And, and naturally, that will have an impact on air quality. Yeah. But we are now seeing a lot more van options available. Um, recently, in the LCV report that we produced, uh, you know, electric vans have come a, a long way. Um, and we're now seeing a lot more options. And, and to meet that home delivery de uh, demand, there are vans out there. That would imply that the green option for a business, you know, if they're seen as using an electric van when they deliver things to people's houses, that's, a, you know, not bad PR. No, absolutely. And that, that's exactly what, uh, what everybody wants, yeah. really. Everybody wants to see more electric vans turning up uh, at the door. Um, because you're right, like with me, I, I, I regularly probably a day doesn't go by that I don't see something arrive on the yeah. doorstep. But it's really encouraging now to see a number of uh, operators uh, using electric vans. And we're seeing more and more of them uh, arrive at our homes. Yeah. And the post office being a very good idea, uh, example in this country, finally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been moaning about that for years. But because they have absolutely absolute oh, no. route. So our post lady, who's wonderful, yeah, no. I know how she does 38 miles a day and she's doing a rural delivery, you know, 38 miles. Well, and, that, and that's where they work the best, yeah. when you know your routes, where yeah. you're operating, um, and they tend to be slightly smaller uh, yeah. mileage. And that's where electric vehicles work really well. These start stop, very different to how yeah. diesels operate. Yeah. So yeah, yeah definitely. It's, uh, it's really good. So I mean, what, what trends are you seeing then that are emerging in, in the electric vehicle market? I mean, you know, from, the, from where you, you yeah. stand? Well, I think there's, there's probably three key trends, I would say. I think uh, probably the biggest really is at the moment is around the introduction of low emission zones. You know, clearly there's a, there's a financial environmental benefit um, to operating electric vans in those areas. And secondly, sort of the local uh, and sustainable city hubs we're seeing. And as we were mentioning a moment, the increase in the last mile delivery uh, market that we're, we're seeing. Um, but also it's really important uh, is around the sort of advances we've seen in digital applications and, and, and telematics, which are really helping uh, fleet operate, operators uh, optimise their delivery. So from what you've been saying, Matt, it, it sounds like, you know, there's still quite a long way to go in terms of, you know, really convincing mm. the, the the entirety of the, the British fleet managers to go electric. I mean, what, 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 are you, what do you see as, the, as, the, as the, the, what catalysts need to happen to make that tipping point occur? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, certainly raising awareness. Raising awareness is really important. I think certainly around uh, allowing fleet operators uh, and drivers to understand what vans are out there, what electric vans are out there and what they can do. Um, uh, on our website, we actually have our ELCV tool, which is, is there really to support businesses and, and get them to better understand whether or not their operation suits electrification at this particular point. Um, but I think probably even more so important here, we, we, we really do need central government uh, supporting and making sure that transitioning to electric vehicles is as attractive as it can be. So then getting back to those businesses that are at the sharp end, what, what, is, what do you think it is? Is there a main thing that's holding them back? Um, there's probably a couple of areas, I think. Um, uh, I think certainly range anxiety exists. We've, we've heard this terminology for a few years now. Um, and, but certainly from a van perspective, yes, there are slightly smaller ranges in some cases than comparative to cars. Um, but we're seeing every day new models appear with much stronger ranges. I mean, there's many uh, electric LCVs at the moment that are capable of doing anywhere between 100 and 200 miles in one single charge. And, and what we do know is there's roughly 50% of, of all uh, light commercial vehicles in the UK are traveling less than 62 miles a day. Yeah. So clearly vans like Arrival are, are, are best suited for some of those operations. Um, but also, I think 
charging infrastructure. Yeah. Um, uh, even though you know it's growing every day, there's roughly, I think, uh, to date, around about 25,000 uh, public charge points out there. Um, but for some fleet operators, um, it is a concern still, it is something to consider, and, and sometimes those charge points aren't quite where they need them to be for their operation, but uh, the future's very bright. We're seeing them increase every single day, so uh, that's, a, that's a massive push there. And I guess the other uh, challenge for a business is the upfront cost. You know, I mean, an electric van is still more expensive than a diesel or, or petrol one. You know, is that, I would imagine they're very clued up as opposed to like an individual deciding to buy a, one particular car, if you're a fleet manager, you've got spreadsheets. You know how far the vehicles go, you know how much fuel they use, you yeah, know how much yeah. they cost over yeah, their lifetime, true. all that stuff. So they've got a much, presumably, much better grasp. But is, that, is the cost of the van still a, 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 a factor? It's still a factor, um, you know, as you said a moment ago, that the electric vans continue to be uh, uh, more expensive maybe than their, uh, in terms of capital cost, than their, their diesel counterparts. Um, although we are seeing that cost now come down. And, and I yeah. think what we're seeing now is as, as the uh, electric LCV market has grown uh, over the last few years, we're starting to see more people driving them, which means we're getting more data. Yeah. And with more data, we get a better understanding of cost. So it's rather than, than not necessarily guessing or forecasting, they've got actual information now to tell whether or not actually this is how much it costs to run the vehicle so they're able to look at the capital cost and then obviously compare it to actually the running side of things yeah. um, and, and as we said before that they are they're now seeing a number of operators are seeing that the uh, total cost of ownership is actually less right. um, and hence uh, larger operators at the moment who are, are, are diving full into uh, full electric which is which is great to see and, yeah. and arguably storming ahead so is the kind of biggest challenge then for fleet operators in a sense a cultural one rather than a technical one? I mean, I'm coming to this conclusion that the fears that people have about range anxiety can only exist before you've driven an electric vehicle because once you've driven one you go it's just a car it's not so much an interest. yeah so uh, absolutely it, it's not just the physical vehicle and the infrastructure that, that needs to be considered um, i think what you, we really need to do is, is, as fleet operators um, is to have the driver a front and center of, of everybody's minds because you know driver training and awareness is critical for successful transition into electric yeah. Um, so yeah i would absolutely encourage uh, a fleet operator when they're considering transitioning to electric trick that they they keep drivers at the front of their mind and that will ensure that you have a, a safe and successful uh, move towards electric vehicles. So in another episode we, we're doing in this series Matt mm -hmm. we're talking about the 2030 ice ban, ban on the sales of new combustion engine vehicles but I, I actually didn't realize until recently that also applies to vans. So that is a that's a fairly critical yeah, point that uh, it, it, we've got it, to be ready great. for. It's it, great. It, it's great, and I think uh, uh, I think the industry is is, is welcoming it. Um, but I think to ensure that we we accelerate the momentum into electric vehicles is government really do need to continue to incentivise businesses right now and up until that 2030. Yeah. Ban. That'll be the, the real success story. And it was is really good to see uh, most recently with the government's green print and, and 10 point plan that they are investing 1.3 billion pounds in public infrastructure. Yeah. Personally, I think that will be a, a, a huge critical success factor in the transition to electric. Because I mean, I think that's the thing whenever I hear people go, we're not ready for 2030. I go, well, it is 2021 at the moment. No, we're not ready. <laughs> and if nothing changes between now and then, we're going to be driving diesels. Exactly. But we have to do so. We have to see this enormous rollout. So as with other episodes in this series, we're speaking to real people about their experiences. Not that you're not a real person, Matt. I mean, you're very real. <laughs> you can see that. But they, we want to find out about those real world insights using an electric fleet. I manage a commercial fleet for a national park and we have quite a diverse array of vehicles because of the diverse landscape we operate in. These range from pickup trucks to plug-in hybrid vehicles and fully electric vans and cars. We decided to make the uh, transition to EVs in 2016 when we got our first plug-in range extender BMW i3, got a second one a year later and realised that actually these cars will work for us so we decided then to make the transition for all our vehicles to electric vehicles. Uh, main driving force is we're basically, we're an environmental organization. So we kind of 
protect the environment and we thought we need to go that step further by doing that with our vehicles. So the switch to zero emission vehicles was a bit of a no-brainer for us. We trialled a number of vehicles. There are some vehicles which still there are no electric versions available, but for pool cars, like commercial vehicles, we just switched entirely to electric vehicles. The transition to EVs wasn't as difficult as we thought. It was a lesser impact than we thought with user perception. Initially, people didn't want to drive the electric vehicles, but once they got in the vehicles and dro drove them, they found they were just like any other car, just happened to be powered by electricity, and then widespread adoption started throughout the organization. The biggest uh, operational difficulty for us was the lack of charging infrastructure within the national park. So we set about building our own charging infrastructure with a number of uh, charging posts with between seven and 22 kilowatt charging on them. And a lot of those are publicly accessible, which also allowed people to bring their own electric cars into the park to enjoy the environment using zero emission vehicles. By going electric, we've noticed maintenance costs have gone down significantly and also the fuel savings. You know, we save on average about 50% in the running costs of our electric vehicles as opposed to a, a diesel or petrol equivalent. Uh, even though it's quite remote, we still have quite a small distance between sites. So basically we can get to end to end on the park without charging on any electric vehicle, even some of the very early ones. So it wasn't as big a challenge as we anticipated. The visitors to the National Park have actually found great benefit of us switching to EVs because it has allowed us to deploy public charging infrastructure so they can come to the park with their electric vehicles. And just the message that the National Park is going green is a great message to get out there to say, you know, we're an environmental organization and we're going to zero emission vehicles and hopefully they can follow on from that and use electric vehicles themselves. In the electric van market, change is coming soon and the new models have the potential to fundamentally reshape fleet operations, enabling organisations to achieve net zero operations. I mean, just look at Rival's new van. This is fantastic, isn't it? Matt? Oh, absolutely. And this is definitely the future for electric vehicles. Great stuff. Well, thanks so much, Matt, for spending time with us today. Really interesting. I've learned a lot about vans and the future of fleet operations. I mean, it is, a, I think, a really exciting area that you know, maybe most people who drive private cars don't really think about, but we are all dependent on having things delivered now. It's become the norm, Absolutely. isn't it? So, well, thanks so much, Matt. It's been really interesting talking to you. I've learned a lot about fleet vehicles, and I basically am just waiting for the day when we're not reliant on dirty, smoky diesels to have all our things delivered at home. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, do join us again for more episodes in this series. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.